Since y'all are along with me on this journey to creating an adjustable neck, now is a great time to check in so I can show you, right before we get ready to close up the box on this, where we're at with this neck block and the adjustable neck. I've gone ahead and created the neck pocket. Now this is just deep enough to go through both of the sides. Uh, this is a double layered side. So we're just going deep enough to get through both of them and just to touch the surface of the neck block. In the neck block, I've got the two bolts that are gonna hold to the neck. And then I've got two grub screws that you saw before. These are gonna be the anchor points, the pivot points that the two button head screws that are gonna be in the neck itself, those will rest inside of those grub screws. Once you tighten this down, then you can adjust the bottom bolt, that becomes the pivot. Now, as we take a look at the neck, you'll see that the fretboard extension has this slight taper to it out to the very end. That is intentional, that is designed to match the radius of the soundboard. So this should all square up. Uh, in the top of this, I've cut two slots just to do a little bit of extra strength there. We're going to put in uh, a couple of carbon fiber rods. These are little tiny rods, and I, I don't know whether they're going to add enough strength or any strength at all, but we're going to give it a shot. I needed something small enough that I could fit into half recessed into the neck and then half recessed into uh, the actual fretboard. The, the problem is, is that I just, I don't have a whole lot of space here to cut depth in, so that's why I had to go with such a small rod. So I figured some support's better than no support, so we'll see if that helps. Now in the neck, we have seated that uh, round rod. It has been threaded with two holes uh, that are in the end for us to feed both of the anchor bolts into. In addition to that, you see the two little screw heads here. Uh, those are just tiny screws that are gonna fit inside, somewhat rest inside of that those grub screw uh, heads, and that becomes the pivot point. It is directly in alignment with this top anchor bolt hold because we're gonna tighten that down and that will allow that all to be a pivot point. Now, you'll see as I bring all of these together, all of these angles meet up really nice. You can see they're nice and flat uh, here. And then what we'll have then is the ability to uh, pivot on those button heads then as we tighten down those bolts. Now, I don't wanna get too caught up in the idea that these angles, the radius, uh, has to match that angle that I put into the fretboard extension because this is a movable neck, a, an adjustable neck. So there is going to be a gap there and we've planned for that. But hopefully what will happen is we'll get all of this aligned as flat as possible on the initial setup. And then over time, uh, as an adjustment may be needed, you'd have to be pitching the neck down, which is gonna create uh, just a little bit of a gap there. But Ideally, if I've built the guitar well, there's not gonna be a lot of movement and this will just be a micro adjustment. The great part is, is that you won't have to do a neck reset in order to get that action dialed in just right. There's two reasons for having the back off this guitar still. Uh, one was because I, I am prototyping this neck joint. I wanted to understand how this was gonna go together, so I've taken my time, played around with this a little bit just to make sure it's gonna be what I want. But the other side of this is a little bit more important is that once I put this bolt through the body and I put the captive bolt cover on there, I glue that in place, it's done. I can't get that bolt back out of there. So if I do that before I cut the pocket for the neck, I won't be able to get a router in there and route around that bolt because it's gonna be locked in place. So it, it is important to do these steps in this order. Go ahead and put the soundboard on, go ahead and drill through the neck block for your two bolts, expose that through, bolt on the neck, draw your line around that, and then go ahead and cut your neck pocket at that point. Then you can go ahead and secure that captive bolt and then put the back on the guitar. I think this bolt cover needs just one more finishing touch. goes in, uh, wave washer on top of that, and then just need some glue on the block and we'll tap that into place. Yeah, I like that. Just a little bit of sandpaper on there and I think that that'll clean up real nice and it'll look good. 
The glue is now set on this cap. It came out really nice, and I think we're ready to go ahead and try a test fit. Now that this bolt uh, is fixed in here for the cap captive bolt, uh, we've got to go ahead and screw that in first. From there, we can go ahead and put in the top bolt. Now I can go ahead and tighten this top bolt uh, all the way because it's uh, drawing in those two button head screws into the grub screws, which creates that pivot lock. So that, that can be tight because they're in parallel with this bolt. And you'll see here, there's a, an actual gap underneath of there, and that's fine uh, because I have the ability to adjust it. But the one thing I wanna call out is that gap is actually uh, something that I think is a benefit of this design because Underneath of that is a soundboard that is free, right? That is not being attached to the fingerboard, the fretboard extension that's coming over the body of the guitar. So you're freeing all of that to move as part of the soundboard. So I think that's really a benefit to this. I'm, I'm hoping that's what it translates into is that we get a more responsive top out of that. Okay, this is the exciting part. This is where the, the magic happens. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I've got a, the Allen wrench inside. I'm gonna turn it in the increase direction, which would be the increasing the string height. So you should see the neck draw up and it will, uh, this gap here in the back should start to go away as I give it a twist. And there you see it draw down right to the top of the soundboard. That is awesome. One more thing I wanted to point out is you'll notice here at the heel that even when we made that adjustment to kick the heel out, uh, the heel is still uh, inside of the cavity that we created, that we routed out of the body. Um, that's that's uh, what's allowing us that movement on the bottom. So uh, based on the testing we did before, that's gonna give us plenty of string movement here on the top to compensate for any kind of lift that would happen at the bridge over time. This neck design gives me a ton of flexibility. Normally those two really difficult parts about setting a neck is the uh, angle of the neck for sure, but there's also the pitch of the neck, uh, that left and right alignment to make sure that the strings are headed and even and straight down the body of the guitar. So you saw the adjustment that I can make easily to the angle of the neck. The other part of that is remember those two screws, those button heads on those screws come into two grub screws. Well, I can just twist those grub screws as needed to adjust that alignment. So there's no wood shaving or anything necessary for that level of adjustment on the neck. So it's two benefits that we get out of this style. I think that's a good place for us to stop with this because I need to go ahead and finish this guitar out. I just wanted to stop here and test enough to get a degree of confidence that the neck is going to be something that's gonna work in this design. So I think we call this prototyping success and we'll move on to completing the guitar. I'm gonna bring you back though at the very end when we do all of the setup on this because that's when all of this adjustability comes into play and I'll walk through all of that at that point. So I'm excited for that, I hope you are too, but until that point, I'll catch you all next time.